Tanner, check Tanner, check Tanner, Tanner, check Tanner, check Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be building a giant capacitor bank. So I was recently at the electronics warehouse and I found a bunch of these gigantic capacitors. Now each of these capacitors is rated at 520 microfarads at approximately 450 volts. So I bought eight of these capacitors. And we're going to hook them up so we have a capacitor bank with a total capacitance of approximately 1,040 microfarads. And it'll have a voltage rating of approximately a little bit over probably 900 volts. Which means we'll have a 520 joule capacitor bank. And this will be pretty fun to play with. So let's get started building this capacitor bank so we can have some fun making a coil gun, launching some hard drive disks, or maybe just blowing some random stuff up. Having a lot of fun. Let's get started. Alright, so this is my bank of eight capacitors. As you can see, these are Mallory capacitors, only the finest. Made in Canada. Canadian, eh? Canadian. Shout out to all viewers from Canada. Nice quality capacitors, eh? I like hockey. Well, anyway, we've got the capacitors, we've got these little connectors to connect all the capacitors. We've got these really thick high current connectors to connect the high current capacitors. We've got a pretty cool gauge to measure the voltage of our capacitor bank. This thing goes up to 600 volts, maybe. We also got a bridge rectifier, a full bridge rectifier, to uh, put the voltage uh, from AC to DC, and a hefty microwave transformer to supply that high voltage. We've got the capacitor bank, and we're going to use wood to enclose it. Alright, so I'm not actually going to build the wooden frame for this capacitor bank just yet. So in this video, we're just going to merely wire it up and see if it works. So here's my schematic. We're going to have the Variac power supply. The Variac is going to be powering this device. It's going to be limiting the voltage. So a Variac looks something like this where it has a center tap in the middle, where it can adjust the AC voltage that comes out between these two points. The output of the Variac is going to be fed into a microwave transformer, and the microwave transformer is going to step up the voltage from the Variac to a very high voltage of 2000 volts, when the Variac is at 120 volts. So if we adjust the Variac to a lower voltage, then we can have a lower voltage output on the transformer that is still relatively high. And because our max voltage is approximately 100, uh, 2,000, 1,000 volts for the capacitor bank, we don't want to exceed that, and that's why we're using the Variac. So this is the output of the microwave transformer. We're going to have that fed through a diode, which is going to be the positive side of it. That is also going to go through a resistor of approximately 500 ohms. And now this resistor is just to limit the current, because the current can now this resistor is just to limit the current output by this device because what's going to happen is the capacitors have a very low resistance when they're charging, almost infinite, like as close to zero as possible. So it's going to draw infinite current, but we can't have that draw infinite current. And so this is to limit the current so it doesn't blow out the fuses on my Variac power supply or the microwave transformer, and it doesn't overload the capacitors while we're charging them. So that's going to be fed directly into the bank of capacitors. Now to how we're going to wire these capacitors up. Alright, so now Zach is going to be attaching all these capacitors together in that series parallel formation using these really cool wires that I also found at the electronics warehouse. Oh, this capacitor bank's looking good. So I got some stuff to charge it up. We've got this. This is a microwave transformer. I've got the diode on it. Keep in mind that I'm not using any safety measures. I'm not adding a ground. And I'm doing this on carpet, so it's not exactly the safest thing. So don't copy this at home until I show you the final product in my next video. But either way, you should build this, it's pretty cool. As you can see, I've got it safely configured with a resistor. This resistor is for safety. I not plug that resistor in yet. Not while my hands are here. No, but you know what's not fake? The fact that I have the power supply done already. This takes a lot. <laughs> of work. You can't blame me for this. We 
that popcorn? Do you still have the candy corn from a couple years ago in here? I don't know where that went. I think one time I came over and I ate it. That sounds just about right. All right, it's time to start up this capacitor bank. I hope it works. This um, thing right here is going to read out the voltage in DC volts. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if it's exactly right. So we don't have a resistor on there yet. It's just flat out. Let's hook this up. It's charging. Oh, it just dropped. What'd you do? Why is it dropping? It's not holding it. My ears. <laughs> Did it might leave a mark in there? Let me see. That was only half power. <laughs> oh my gosh, show your camera. That was only half power too. That was so loud. Alright, this crank her up. Flat out maxed. Okay. Let me zoom the camera on this. This is what. All right. Now I'm going to calibrate the capacitor bank. I have a 4.8 mega ohm resistor on there, in between the meter and the multimeter. So we're going to turn this on. This thing will tune this up to 200 volts. It's not right. Something is utterly wrong. Did I fry my multimeter? Oh no, never mind. Here we go. So at 200 volts on the analog meter, it's going to go to 400 volts on the real meter, which means that the analog meter is exactly half of what the real voltage is. And I did that by adding that small resistor on there. This will allow us to charge up the capacitor bank and keep it within its limits on voltage so we don't blow it up. So as you can see, that works pretty well. We got the multimeter here and that meter there. So we'll charge this thing up to its maximum capacity, of course, without this meter, because this meter can only go up to like 400 volts or something, so we don't ruin it. We're gonna charge it up to its maximum capacity and then short it out and see what happens. It's not like it can go in any higher. Okay, we hit 800 volts. Holy crap, that, that was... hurt my ears. Zach, you want to pop something on it? Yeah, solder. Drop some solder. But we have to make it long enough so it touches both of them, don't you? Yeah, rip off a piece of solder. Or from your this one? Yeah. I'll touch it to it. Alright guys, so I almost forgot some important safety measures when you're working with high voltage and big explosions. So, number one safety measure is, uh, you gotta wear... Wait, is this high speed video? No. Okay, so number one safety is you gotta wear goggles because there's flying stuff at you. Wear goggles. Second of all, wear these. I didn't wear any ear protection at first, and my ears have been ringing for the past five minutes. So wear ear protection because this thing produces loud explosions. It sounds like a gunshot. You don't want that in your ears. Just be safety, guys. Safety is always number three. You gotta, you gotta have fun, number one, you know? And make money. Alright, so as you can see, that I haven't made the smartest moves here. So although I did have some safety protection, I didn't have very good safety protection. As you can see, my arms got vape hit by flying vapors, vaporized solder right here. Uh, it is covered by this vaporized solder. That's not good. I wasn't being safe, and as you can see, my pants have holes in them from the flying vaporized solder. The same with my instructable shirt and my arm. Not good. Alright, so this time we're going to try it again, but I have some safety protection here. I'm going to be standing farther away with this PVC stick when I touch the solder against the other one, so when it blows up it won't be as bad. We're also going to run this video in slow motion, so that'll be cool. Let's do this.
not skimming. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to have a charge. Yep. So this is kind of just the first version of my capacitor bank. It's not very well set up. It can be charged to a very high voltage and it makes a pretty big explosion, but we can do better. So uh, my next video probably you'll see this capacitor bank be upgraded with more capacitors and in a proper enclosure so it can be moved around more easily. And hopefully we should get some better explosions and we can have some more fun with this thing. I got balloons.